Hello, and welcome to the Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Today is September 9th, uh, September 7th, sorry. Uh, I, that's my American showing. I can't read things properly. Um, but it is September 7th. Uh, this is the EU-US edition. Uh, and today we have myself and Bruno Vrachman joining. Uh, Mark is unavailable to join us today. Uh, so if Chris Stern or anyone else uh, has time to show up, we'll welcome them in. Other than that, we'll go over the agenda. Uh, so for the agenda today, uh, we have uh, several blog posts that were published in the last uh, two weeks, roughly. A couple beyond that, but uh, still related to others. So uh, they're listed there. Uh, the Google Summer of Code is uh, getting to the end of its project, which is really exciting. Um, a lot of the projects have uh, made great strides and are close to complete, if not already completed. So we'll talk about that. Uh, the process of choosing a plugin build materials version. Uh, the Java 11, 17, and 21 support proposal for Jenkins. Um, this is something that Mark's been working on and other uh, developments have happened. Um, with Mark not here, we might not have his nice um, planning schedule uh, proposal, but um, even still, that's something that we've been discussing. Uh, so this is something that I noticed have has been in the the open pull requests that um, Bruno actually uh, really saw it because I saw your recent recent comment on it about um, users suggesting what about using uh, wget instead of curl. Oh uh, yeah, so we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, I think it's just a good topic to to talk about here in the office mm -hmm. hours. Um, the Jenkins Sock Contributor Project. This is something that hasn't necessarily been brought up here in documentation hours uh, previously, but uh, we're actually getting to the point of uh, being ready to, or gearing up to publish and, and make things live uh, in the coming weeks. So I, I do want to talk about that and um, also see if there might be anyone that can help out with some of the HTML generation. Uh, and then last up on the agenda for today, I uh, have DevOps World Tour that's starting next week. And uh, we're going to have the Jenkins after hours uh, sessions. I forget exactly what Mark called them earlier, but um, once the uh, DevOps World Tour day is complete, or if it's two days like next week in New York, uh, we're going to have uh, Jenkins discussion time after hours meeting uh, social hour. I, I, again, I don't know what we're calling it, but um, I think for the time being, it's called yeah. let's talk about Jenkins. That's perfect. So after DevOps World Tour is over, we have let's talk about Jenkins time. Thank you, Bruno. You're welcome. Uh, is there anything else that uh, you feel needs to go on the agenda or you want to discuss today, Bruno? No, I think we're good. I just have found the URL of Mark's uh, proposal for GDK 11, 17, and 21. Oh, beautiful. Okay. So Even I better. put the link yeah, in the document. That's awesome. Great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. okay. Uh, so first up, so, uh, so we've had several blog posts published recently. Uh, the RISC-V uh, blog post from Bruno and uh, Docker Compose and GitLab plugin from Parsh and Ashtosh uh, respectively uh, were published uh, just prior to the two week, but uh, yeah, like I said, we're including them because they have to do with Google Summer Code. And yeah. they are recapping their project work, which is great to see. Uh, they're sharing their insights, their challenges, their their successes, everything from their uh, projects, which is really nice to see. Um, it's just great work all around from the Google Summer Code participants for their consistent work and dedication to getting these things, you know, taken care of. Um, and then the Risk Five blog post that uh, Bruno had written is uh, really nice. It paints a great picture of what the future can look like for Jenkins, including uh, Java support, uh, Risk Five, Arch sixty four, Arm sixty four, uh, just kind of like all the different developmental options that uh, Jenkins could have going forward. And uh, thank you, Kevin. Yeah. yeah, of course. Is there anything that you'd like to uh, point out, call out, or? Uh, no, the, it, it it's, I think it's the first post about GDK 21 and we'll see lots of more posts uh, by people who know what they are talking about. For example, Mark Waite about GDK 21, because I'm all, when it comes to experimenting, I love what I'm doing, but I'm not the one who worked the most on GDK 21 for Jenkins, not at all. It was just <laughs> fun to, yeah, fun to experiment with GDK 21 and RISC-V at the same time and yeah, 
you will see more articles about JDK21, and we'll talk about that maybe later in the meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, um, and yeah, no worries about the image, um, you know, no copyright or whatever. It has been generated with AI, of course, but oh, yeah. which doesn't mean that the AI hasn't ingested uh, things that were proprietary first. I honestly but didn't we'll even rec I didn't notice the Jenkins logo on the hood of the car the first time. So this I actually just noticed it. And that's why it's up here. I really that's just funny and I like it. Yeah, and um, there are also Jenkins written on the front part on the grill. You know Jenkins. Oh yeah, look yeah. At that. <laughs> and this one was not AI generated. Same for the hood. It's just my poor skills on Photoshop. <laughs> well, <laughs> Anyhow, uh, could have fooled me. No worries. I like it. Um, We'll talk about my headshots next time. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, so oh, fantastic. Thank you so much, Bruno, for that and uh, the insight. Um, and then uh, the last two blog posts we have listed here. Uh, so Mark just uh, wrote this um, yeah, yesterday, uh, but it's just a brief recap or a brief preview of what DevOps World 2023 will look like for, for the Jenkins project. So uh, introductions to Tim Jacome, Olivia Lamy, and Mark Waite. Uh, what their backgrounds are, what their um, Marx is goes into a little bit about what he's going to be talking about. Um, but yeah, just a quick little preview for those attending or those wanting to attend. Uh, and then this was uh, just published yesterday as well, later in the day, but um, this is part of the Artifactory Bandwidth Reduction uh, project that has been going on for some time now. Um, just some updates regarding Maven Central. Uh, caching and kind of what we're learning with the respective downtimes that have been going on. Um, this is helping us figure out what is causing bandwidth uh, overuse. We did have some, we've had uh, issues recently with uh, overuse by some uh, users. We've managed to nip some of that in the bud, but not all of it. So we're, this is still the ongoing process of how can we make the usage a little bit less uh, well, um, huge, I guess is the best way to put it. Uh, JFrog would love for us to get down a little bit further than where we're at now. So that's the, that's the, uh, goal of the project. And that's what we're working on. Okay. Uh, anything else on the blog posts, Bruno? No, thank you, Kevin. Okay. Just making sure. Great. Uh, so then next up, Google Summer of Code. Uh, so as I had mentioned earlier, Google Summer of Code is getting towards the uh, back end of things at this point. Uh, I know that we still have a few weeks and that the participants are going to be creating their recap blog posts um, to do a full uh, just kind of retrospective on their project and what they worked on and everything. Um, that's what we use and have used in the past for Google as one of the uh, uh, one of the project completion points for Google is having a full summary of the participants' project and the work they did. Uh, so the blog posts that will be coming out um, and that have been published are those those recaps. So um, there should be a few more coming, but um, that's only that's uh, and that's due to the fact that uh, Jagruti has submitted a few different blog posts regarding the different probes that she had worked on, um, but that's. There are smaller individual blog posts for each probe as opposed to a full recap blog post. So little things. Um, but uh, as far as the projects go, so the doc compose has been successfully completed. Four out of five tutorials are now uh, executing with a single command. Um, and there is some remaining work to take on, but uh, the project's been, the, that's been completed. So this is all, you know, after the fact, this is uh, in addition to not uh, something that we needed to do to get past the finish line. So that's uh, fantastic. Uh, the next, pro so then we've got the version documentation for building Jenkins.io that Bondi has been working on. Um, the demo site has been really great to see. Bondi and uh, Chris Stern have been demoing this respectively at uh, various meetings over the last couple of weeks for the Jenkins project and the Jenkins community, which is great to see. Uh, and they're getting to the point where they're it's uh, they're almost at a working site, which is amazing. Um, Gatsby in integration needs some work, uh, and they just abandoned the strap strappy backend idea. 
uh, which was specifically for blog post reviews. Uh, and then, yeah, so we're going to continue to use GitHub for blog post reviews. No surprises there. Um, there are still some links that need to be fixed and updated to make sure that they're pointing and directing properly. Um, but that's something that they're working on and uh, we'll just take care of uh, as we go along. Um, that could even be potentially something for Hacktoberfest if that's necessary. Um, but we'll see how much access or knowledge you need for that. Uh, next under the Google Summer Code, so the GitLab plugin modernization project uh, has completed successfully as well, which is great. Um, Harsh has actually uh, agreed to continue as a plugin maintainer. Um, and that's a first time a contributor became a maintainer for Google Summer of Code. So that is amazing in and of itself. Um, just thank you, Harsh, for the work and for stepping up to uh, maintain the plugin as well. That's amazing. Um, and that's, yeah, really heartening to see from the Google Summer of Code. Uh, it does still need some more testing, but it's completed and you know, that's the, that's the main point here. Um, everything will need some work and maintenance after the fact. That's just how things go. Uh, so knowing that, but having it be completed and ready to go and have uh, Harsh's enthusiasm and, and dedication to that is, yeah, like I said, really hard. Uh, and then finally, the plugin health scores. Uh, so uh, Adrian has been working uh, been working on some code improvements that could help Jagruti in this. Uh, the, uh, yeah, there have been a couple of probes. Uh, there have been several probes that have been all, um, look to be completed and uh, merged. Um, there, there might be one other one that I'm forgetting about right now. Um, but everything looks to be going well here. Um, yeah, this, this is actually, uh, the project documentation might need additional documentation here for the plugin health score. Uh, and that could be something that we do for Hacktoberfest. Um, Adrienne would still be available and could, uh, guide or, uh, potentially help with that. But, um, if we do a hack for Hacktoberfest, that gives the opportunity for anyone else to come in and help out. So, um, yeah, no good opportunity there. Um, anything else on Google Summer Code projects, Bruno, that you want to mention or mm, highlight? Not really. In fact, we're almost good. As you told earlier, Ashutosh has passed, he has finished the Google Summer of Code, except that we still have to uh, create some pull requests on Jenkins IO because we want to modify the existing documentation and mm -hmm. there has been no progress on this area yet. The thing is, we can't change the documentation and point to Ashutosh on Docker Hub uh, registry. So we first have to move everything to the Jenkins CI or Jenkins Infra organization, and then we'll be able to make the PRs. So they will come when they will come. Okay, great. Good to know. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, next on the agenda, so this is something that we've been discussing the last handful of weeks, uh, is how to describe the process of choosing a plugin bill of materials version. Um, so this is a result of a discussion being started in this uh, PDR that uh, Kyle had submitted. Um, so uh, basically saying that uh, the instructions are a little unclear or not uh, explicit when saying which bomb version to choose based on the Jenkins version itself. Um, there are a couple different pages to go to to get the releases. So for instance, there's our, our GitHub release page where you can scroll through and see. Um, you can also search here, uh, but um, the other uh, end of that is, I think, yeah, this one just lists them out here very directly straightforward um, and Kyle was saying this is this is just easier to kind of navigate because it's uh, more clear and direct in that sense uh, and then Mark responded saying like hey like what if we do something where we have that bomb version and we explain like what this is for or like the specific use case you would want this for um, such as having 2.361 point x 
uh, be the first one to require job 11 or 346 uh, being the last Jenkins to support job at eight. So. Uh, yeah, that would help. Um, this week, as I was trying to help a user who was having some trouble with the Palm plugin, Mm -hmm. I say, oh, you know what? I try my luck. I will try to update um, the PAM plugin just in case, you know, because he was trying to use it on Bookworm and it used to work on Debian 11, but it doesn't work anymore on Debian 12. Anyway, so I said, hey, why not try to uh, use the improve a plugin tutorial while I'm there so that the plugin will be more updated with good practices. And in one part of the document, there is a um, bomb that you have, you know, I think it's done with update CLI or whatever. It's bomb 2.387. Say, okay, why should I choose this one? I have no idea. How is it linked to the version, the minimal version of Jenkins I'm supposed to use? I have mm -hmm. no idea either. And then later on in the tutorial, another step uses a bomb with 2.375 something. Say, why? Is this one? Yeah. Artifact ID, yeah. Why? Uh, so mm -hmm. definitely we need something better. Yeah, definitely. And I think uh, Mark had mentioned even using the update CLI to do that sort of thing. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, that was an option that he had put. Yeah, um, that could be an option that we used uh, in the future. And I think he actually, um, with Asia Docs office hours. I think they uh, determined where they could add in um, this this exact sort of uh, guidance. And if we go to the bomb repo, if I'm not mistaken, in the in the default readme here, um, yeah, I think this is the one. Yeah, this is the one that Mark linked to now in the um, readme for the bomb repo. So. Um, there, there has been some update, but yeah, it's not uh, nothing that has been enough to move this uh, original PR. Yeah, maybe we need to discuss it a little bit more before doing the change. But yeah, it's cool that we have this discussion on the community. Yeah, exactly. Um, this is the kind of thing that uh, is really useful, not only for like this instance, but going forward to other instances, or um, if this comes up again in the future, maybe we can take what we learned here and even improve further. Um, it's one of those just kind of like universal, this is a good way to figure out what the best course of action is. All right. Uh, the next thing on the agenda is the Java 11, Java 17, and Java 21 uh, support proposal that uh, Mark's been working on. Uh, so uh, the long and short of it is uh, Java 11 is currently supported as well as Java 17, and Java 21 is going to be supported in Jenkins as well. Um, we've been working on testing with Java 21. so. Uh, this has been happening, and it's happening a lot faster than uh, originally anticipated. So the odds of Jenkins supporting Java 21 after its release uh, this month, very, very, very highly likely. Uh, if not, it's going to happen kind of thing. So I did, ultimately, the idea is we want to get on a cadence or a uh, kind of routine where we are able to update according to the Java update uh, flow. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is very much a work in progress. And there's still a lot that needs to be done here. Yeah. Um, but oh, yeah, the idea is that uh, we have a plan in place to drop Java 11 support eventually, uh, include Java 17 support, potentially require Java 17, and then um, supporting Java 21 and when we can, when we might start requiring Java 21. Um, and even then, that's been a bit of a discussion. Uh, some developers feel that maybe just skipping Java 17 requirement and just requiring Java 21 could be beneficial. Um, it does provide, you know, that much more uh, power, functionality, tooling, testing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But that is, uh, yeah, that's, that's a little further away from the rest of this right now. Um, yeah, is there anything else that you wanted to share about the, or any insights you have on that one, uh, Bruno? 
No, I, I don't have that many, but I think the goal is to have Jenkins support each LTS version of Java for four years. Um, Java will be supporting their LTS for six years, but I think we will get rid of the two last years and move to the next uh, LTS version. I think that's the goal today. Uh, but as you say, there are still lots of discussion to be had. Uh, yeah, we have to discuss that more and more and more. But hopefully, uh, Jenkins will be able to support JDK 21 by the end of October. Mm -hmm. Fingers crossed. Well, I mean, that, yeah, and uh, yeah, that's the goal. Uh, I'm actually running through the documentation right now to make sure things work like the tutorials, uh, just w when Java 21 is in play like that. Um, so far, so good. So everything seems to be going pretty smoothly on that part, which is nice. Uh, Java 21 seems to be proving pretty useful in a lot of the test cases and um, experimentation that's been going on. So that part, at the very least, is encouraging to see. And uh, yeah, lots more work to come on that. Um, this uh, pull request, I just wanted to bring up and have a short discussion about it. Um, so the reason being is this user uh, brought up that uh, the way that they've uh, gone ahead and installed and set up their Jenkins uh, not using Perl. Their default or their um, their uh, main action was uh, using wget. And so this is all very dependent on how you're setting up your own operating system, your own Jenkins instance. So it's not consistently an issue or something that's hard and fast tied to a specific usage. This person, they just happen to uh, have wget as their like default in this case, let's say. Yeah, so it looks like it's default on Ubuntu, but I've never ever uh, <laughs> met an instance of Ubuntu, Debian, whatever, without curl. I think it's one of the first things I install. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I can get it. Some people get a fresh installation of Ubuntu with nothing, no uh, additional package installed, and then they try mm -hmm. to install Jenkins and <laughs> it fails. Yeah. <clears throat> but as I wrote, I'm in the middle of the bridge. I, I don't know if that's it's uh, US iTunes. I mean, maybe I was trying to translate something French uh, that doesn't make sense in uh, English, but whatever. I don't know. Uh, each of the two propositions makes sense to me. You can mm -hmm. keep curl and say, oh, it's a prerequisite, by the way. Or, OK, we could switch to using wget as each and every distro is supposed to have it. I don't know. What's your feedback about that? So I was I was thinking, um, I was looking at it, and I was looking at your response, Bruno, and I was thinking that either some kind of disclaimer, potentially, at the top of a page uh, at some of the on on the top of some of these pages or potentially if um there's a specific section that seems to uh be a um, worse offender than others maybe um but yeah i would say the disclaimer in my head instead of saying something like you should have curl installed is something like if you don't have curl installed use you know this is what yeah uh, that's where you would put your action item into or like um and if if you're not using curl replace curl with wget or something like that um yeah i don't yeah. know uh, yeah, I, I recognize my phrasing is not uh, ideal <laughs> not um, at all that, oh, no, i know that's, that's not um, what you meant but yeah we could do something better yeah i i, I guess uh what i'm saying is like even if um even if we don't encourage them to install or use or like install something specific or use something specific uh if we just trust that they know what they're doing trust in the yeah. uh, reader is uh sometimes tough because you want to give them as much help obviously without um you know making it too dumbed down at the same time but uh yeah, i feel like there might be something we could do where we don't necessarily replace curl because I don't want to replace curl with what you get throughout the documentation. I think curl is, um, like you said, pretty universally used and installed on default. Um, but yeah, just something small to say, hey, if if you don't have this, use this or 
something like that. Yeah. But that would also, oh. that requires the user to know what they have installed and what they're using. And yeah, it could, it could be tough. Um, I think it, yeah, it just, it, I feel like it boils down to the, the user who's performing these actions and their, mm. their knowledge of the, the, their environment. Yeah. Um, I forgot the name of what I want to talk about, but do you think we could have an expandable section, you know, just in case if you don't have curl and then they click and something appears with the W get command instead of curl or don't oh, do we like have that little, kind of things, a shadow thing or yeah. Like, um, like an example drop down or like that you could, that would be collapsed, but could be expanded. And then if, yep. and then it says, if you don't have curl, use this kind of thing. I like that too. Yeah, that's, I mean, and that's the kind of thing that I was thinking of, because I don't want to put a disclaimer at the top of every page or like at, you know, at all the install pages or something. Um, something like that might be a better option, um, especially because we could put it just in front of code blocks where this would come up instead of the whole page. So, yeah, yeah, I like that idea. It's a little more elegant. Yeah, uh, I, th I, I thanks for discussing that with me, uh, Bruno. I think it was, like I said, a great example of where there could be questions or challenges to the documentation, but um, mm -hmm. we have to, I, it's not like a, an easy decision. It's something that we definitely need to talk about as a community and a project. So I noticed we're at time. Um, I will do the DevOps world tour info really quickly. I would like to take a minute um, just to talk about the contributor project, if that's okay with you, Bruno. Yeah, yeah, fine. So, Go ahead. Okay. Thank you, Gary. Yeah. Um, so DevOps world tour starts next week. Uh, again, we're going to be touching uh, multiple locations, multiple countries across the world. Uh, New York, Chicago, and Santa Clara, California are going to be our U.S. stops. Mark Waite will be attending all of those and will be giving a, a talk as well. Uh, and then after the end of all of these DevOps World Tour sessions, we're going to have Jen uh, let's talk about Jenkins time. Uh, so once the conference is over, we'll have separate uh, a separate session where we'll be able to talk all things Jenkins. Uh, Mark will be at the, Cal the US ones, Olivia Lamy and Tim Jacon will be at the Singapore and London ones respectively, uh, and they'll be giving their own talks there as well. Uh, again, the preview page blog post went up uh, today, so it is there for further information. And the DevOps World Tour site is still available for registration uh, if you haven't already yet. And uh, last thing on the agenda, so um, brief summary, we've been working on this for some for some time now. Uh, we want to recognize and acknowledge and uh, spotlight, highlight, and show appreciation for the top contributors to the Jenkins project. Uh, the, this is an open source project that would not be where it is if it were not for the contributions and the dedication and hard work of the community and the contributors that uh, continue to prop Jenkins up as it is today. Uh, so we are uh, working on getting a, a compilation of contributor stories. Uh, each of the top contributors has been uh, will be responding to a questionnaire sent out or doing an interview with me. Uh, where we can capture their stories, their experiences, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then we're going to be publishing these live on um, either the Jenkins.io site or stories.jenkins.io site. Uh, but basically, we just want to show and spotlight the various contributors to Jenkins and give them their uh, moment in the sun that they deserve for all this. Um, We've gotten to the point now where we're getting responses back and our next step is to create a landing page slash overview page for the contributors uh, and the individual contributor pages themselves. Uh, just to shout out Christina uh, Pizzagalli who uh, put this mock-up together, just amazing uh, and just really wonderful to work with. Thank you so much, Christina, for doing this. Um, this is just a really nice little landing page that we discussed simple uh we'll have a different uh, 25 is not hard and fast that's not going to mm -hmm. be an, um, part of that text there but that'll be changed we have the contributors and then we'll have the individual contributor page like this where we'll have their interview oh. posted links location um, this is also to show just how global the reach of the jenkins project is 
and uh, get people connected, give people some background to the folks that they might work with and never really get a chance to talk to. So that looks cool. Yeah, really excited. And um, yeah, Christina did amazing with this, just coming up with a mock up. Um, Alyssa and I met with her uh, this past Tuesday, and she was able to get a, um, this put together in a couple of days. So uh, yeah, just once again, massive thanks to her and um, appreciate the just the uh, ability to uh, be open to this and helping us out with this. So yeah. um, if yeah. anyone has any sort of HTML skills and would uh, be interested mm -hmm. in helping put this together, uh, HTML is not my forte, unfortunately. I am not a uh, developer. So uh, if anyone has any HTML skills they want to flex, share, and uh, maybe even show me how to do some things, uh, more than happy to take a look. I have posted in the UX SIG uh, Gitter channel as well. So uh, it is there too, but uh, yeah, if anyone has any uh, insights or would like to assist in building that site, uh, just let me know. Uh, I don't, unfortunately. <clears throat> you That's know, okay, um, contributor recognition and appreciation is a massive subject for open source communities. I'm part of something called community maintainers on GitHub. It's a special repo where people discuss about their open source community. And mm -hmm. lately there has been a, a subject called contributor recognition and appreciation. And all the people participating are facing the same issue as we have. How should we um, put people under the light? Um, and frankly, uh, there is no answer. Um, everybody does things more or less looking the same and they're not happy with that. No magical uh, skills or wand or whatever that can help. Uh, lots of people have thought of technical solutions to this. For example, you know, finding all the contributors in their GitHub uh, repos and then crafting automatically a page which lists all the contributors with their um, avatars or whatever. But um, most of the time, it almost works. But it does not work. There are lots of uh, manual uh, interaction things to modify by hand afterwards because they also want to link that to people's LinkedIn account, for example, Twitter account, mm -hmm. uh, whatever. And you have to do that by hand because people may be called as me, Podang on the platform, Gunta on another one. And so it doesn't match. So the technical solution is not there. I think we may gather some statistics, whatever, but there will be some things to do by real human, I'm afraid. It's, uh, it's funny that you mentioned that because when we were discussing different ways to highlight and appreciate that, one of the things that I had thought of was one of those uh, contributor uh, kind of bot display yeah. tables. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, there's a bot who is called All Contributors Bot. Uh, yeah, that's working actually on GitHub. <laughs> yeah, okay, of course. <laughs> Yeah, that's the one I was looking at. And then when I was trying to set it up in my own repo to test it out, th oh. these are, those are the exact things I found out for myself too, how um, it's a lot more work and involved than it uh, mm. feels like it should. But yeah, yeah. Um, looks like a good idea until you uh, try to work with it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's, it's good to know that, uh, that other people are having kind of facing the same thing. It's definitely a hot topic. Um, and in my own research and trying to figure out how we could do this appreciation i you know it's tough with open source projects you know not being for profit necessarily um takes like it's hard to do recognition uh in a form in a forum where there is necess not necessarily a monetary value associated with that appreciation or like that hard work that you're putting in it's like it takes passion, it takes dedication, it takes a lot of things that unfortunately um, do not always get valued in how we would maybe like them to. But yeah, <clears throat> there's it's remember. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no, I was gonna say there's <clears throat> it remembers me there's... of uh, the things I used to say to my kids when they were younger, you know, they were waiting for a reward when they were getting good marks, you know, uh, a plus or something. I should get something, you know, uh, a candy, uh, money, something. No, the reward is into the good mark you you got. You learned something and you had an A plus. That's a reward. And it's difficult for 
uh, people working in open source because the reward is having a good product, a product that mm -hmm. people love, a people, uh, product that people use. That's the main reward. And um, talking about yourself, bragging about your skills, you know, being put in the front page, that's uncomfortable. So it's difficult to find the right ways to put people under the light, but it's <laughs> also difficult to put those people to push them uh, under the light because they don't feel like they deserve it or that's not the main point of their engagement they just want to help yeah uh i think uh without giving anything away one of the responses that we've received for the project basically is all passion all heart you know just loves helping wants to be part of it just loves jenkins because of how much it's helped them and how much like how much they've invested into it so it's like they're very aware of all of this you know and it's not to take anything away or to to say like oh you're not being appreciated but you know that is the kind of dedication passion that like drives all this open source development um and, and it's just like acknowledging that aspect you know sharing that giving that effect like that infectious like joy and spark to other people maybe like that's all it takes or you know um i feel like the interviews and, and questionnaire and responses are, are pretty like low risk in in terms of that person being highlighted and stuff yeah there there's going to be some fanfare associated but there should be the, the work that they're doing is unreal and necessary and huge and like just pushes us forward uh, gives us, you know, gives us more work to do. It's it's the driving force. So uh, it's it needs to be appreciated. These people need to be appreciated and highlighted. Like highlighted is one aspect of it, but the appreciation needs to happen. For I mean, I know I feel better and will continue to do things when I know it's appreciated. Yeah. So, but yeah um the project's coming along really well we're in a, we're getting a lot of good stuff we're in a good really good place with it it's just a matter of uh getting it published and live more than anything else and uh yeah once we start publishing them they're going to be coming out on a you know reg hopefully regular cadence of you know by every yeah, other week i every didn't hear weeks. you say be weekly <laughs> bi-weekly so, no no you didn't say that regularly it's a sufficiently vague term uh, to say that we will make it yeah whenever yeah. we can yeah it will be out regularly but um yeah this way we everyone gets a time their time to kind of shine in the spotlight without being overwhelmed um and yeah i think it's just nice to give that personal aspect to to these as well um for me joining an open source community has been really fun and great because i get to interact with a uh, plethora of people I've I've never met in person before and from all different walks of life and I might but I might not ever get to connect with them on a personal basis this is this is a really nice opportunity to get that connection even if it's not direct with that person you can still it you know that comfort level is increased by just knowing that you know uh I found out one of our top contributors is super into music and is actually has been playing trumpet for 15 years oh i don't think i would have even asked no that question uh so it's really it's really cool to get insight into someone like this and um yeah i i have high hopes that it's going to be a really nice recognition project and that the contributors will feel uh you know good after this that's i mean my, my end goal is making sure that the contributors feel yeah. appreciated so that's really all yeah, it's more or less uh, discover the real human being hiding behind the contributor. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That butler is uh, the the face of Jenkins, but uh, all the internal body parts and stuff like that are all different oh. people. <laughs> anyway, nice one. Uh, we won't. Yeah, we won't get into which body parts are who. Um, anyway. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> but uh, I'm not the brains. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Okay. Uh, anyway, so uh, that concludes the agenda I had for today. Thanks for sticking around for the extra time. I appreciate it. And thank you for the discussion today. Uh, thank really you. nice. Uh, the 
recording will be up in 24 to 48 hours. And we'll be back next week. Until then, take care. And thank you as always. <laughs>